These guys, you just got to love them. All right, that is uh, One Love Coppola and Debbie. Uh, in fact, campaigning for reuse and recycle and, 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 and riding your bicycle. I want, to, I want to break the conversation down. Should I try? Should I try? So if you don't understand the song, they're saying refuse, reuse, recycle. Try to ride your bicycle. So we're trying to have a conversation before we got into the show. And we're, we're enlightened that the reason why they introduced the bicycle in the entire conversation, because you'll be asking yourself, what has that got to do with bicycle? Okay, so the emissions from your cars are also polluting the environment. They're polluting the climate. They are destroying our climate. So yes, they said stop driving the cars and use bicycle. Did I do, did I do great? Yes. I did great. Ah, thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us back here on the show. This is the AM Club, and we're moving straight into our lifestyle daily. And today, we're learning something exciting. And I did. I keep telling you that right here on the show, uh, what we do is try to inform you. And um, in fact, to the top, 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 top of the, to the peak of the show, we try to educate you as well. So I pray you stay with us, and we have this conversation today. We're talking, Jay. My concern would be still about the emissions levy. Mm -hmm. But I will not go into that now. It will. Yes. You want us to go back levy. to emissions levy? No, no, no. no I will not get into listen, that. It listen, hasn't been implemented, listen, has it? Listen, listen. I didn't like the whole idea. I was really against it. Until I drove around the 37 <laughs> one time. <laughs> there was a car in front of me. Now you want to charge the car. What it was doing to me. Yeah. Now you I rolled up so I could smell the thing. Yeah. So I passed by him and said, Government, Baba G emission levy. <laughs> <laughs> I was so angry. You I was know, like, sometimes. Government is coming for a mission Well, levy. then again, you think about it and you're like, well, because I ask myself, some of the cars on the road, mm -hmm. uh, are they actually roadworthy? See, yeah, that is why. Living it's okay, in a, but we're still in, paying in for a road developing road country is hard. It's fine. Because if you go to developed countries, you can't drive those cars. In fact, you are bad. You can go to jail mm. for driving a car with that. It's uh, not that you can go. You will go. <laughs> you will go to hey. jail. So today Anyways. we're talking. Uh, re, uh, I mean, ways to recycle, uh, uh, waste, yes. its effectiveness, and yes. all of And get it right. And, and get it right. Yeah, for, it that, right. for that matter. So Jane, who do we have inside the studios? Hmm. It's good, Amanda. It's good that I threw it off to you. Yes. We have Amanda. <laughs> and she said I should pronounce the last name. I told you, but I don't do well with names. But her name is Sumabi. 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 I promise I thought these girls were from East Africa, girl. <laughs> okay, so and then she is the project coordinator at Waste Right. And we also have Diana Titu, um, public relations officer, Waste Right. Hi, ladies. Hi. The ladies that got me thinking that they're from East Africa. <laughs> Am I right or wrong? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the show. Thank you. How are you doing? Fine. Ladies in waste management. That's exciting to watch. Indeed, the women have been totally empowered. We have gone. Yeah, How are you, you doing you this want morning? To bring the conversation on women empowerment. No, I'm just this saying. Morning. I'm just saying. I'm just saying that we're doing great, <laughs> utilizing that that power. Absolutely. Now let's go straight into our conversation for today. So if you look on the set today, we have dustbins, we have rubbers, we have baskets. We're going to teach you how to recycle right, doing this waste management thing right. Mm -hmm. Now let's move straight into, because again, um, technology is here to save our lives, to make life easier. So can you take, tell us what, run us through the waste management skills that are, you know, new, the fresh things that we can do to manage waste um, uh, as Guineans, okay. since we're already here in Ghana. Um, so in promoting the zero waste agenda, um, I would say waste recycling is something, it's, it's, it's a labor of love. Mm -hmm. You need to be very environmentally conscious. You need to love your country, love the climate, love your health to be able to um, recycle your waste. And so the five main categories of waste are plastic. Plastic include bottles and sachets and polythene bags. We also have food waste, which is top of the chain. Mm -hmm. Every household produces food waste. Yeah. We have paper waste, which is usually found in offices mm -hmm. and in schools. We also have metallic waste. Mm -hmm. um, you remember how someone will come around in the neighborhood asking for metallic waste to be yeah. recycled. We also have bottles. That's the glass kind of waste you get from your perfumes, from your alcoholic beverages and all of that. And so um, we are advocating for that, waste segregation, as a tool 
to promote climate mitigation, number okay. one. Okay. Also to promote agriculture, because as I mentioned, the food waste we generate in our homes, tons and tons of them from restaurants, from, you know, there are some that you cannot even reuse at home. For example, yeah. the plantain um, Husk, peels, the yeah. Husk, yeah. corn husks and all of that, you cannot reuse. But then goats eat those yeah. ones, yeah. right? And the cassava peels and all of that. And so we are really advocating for the food waste to be segregated. Because once you lump it up, it ends up in the landfills. It produces methane gases, which are very harmful to our environment. Mm -hmm. And even though we have um, women within the unofficial sector picking their waste segregators, mm -hmm. we work with these, it's not easy to look out for a tomato yeah. that can be used for compost in a whole landfill. Yeah. So we're really advocating for waste segregation in that regard. Mm -hmm. So these five wastes mm -hmm. is um, easy to recycle. And so right now, what are the methods that you're using in segregating? Okay. 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 You want to take that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right, sure. okay, so aside, like uh, Amanda talking about being, it's been a labor of love, mm -hmm. it's also highly pertinent because mm -hmm. stats are telling us that we generate globally, we generate about 2 billion tons of waste. That's 2 billion? A lot. 2 billion, that's globally. a lot, yes. We're and by 2050, that will double. 4 billion. Wow. So it's, we are on a time bomb, like yeah, we need we to are. do something. That's why this whole idea around waste segregation is very key. We need to run with it and we are invite. that's why we are even here, inviting everybody Absolutely. to come on board. So we are saying segregate your waste, mm -hmm. then you access how. Mm -hmm. One of the ways you can do that is using color coordinated bins. Like for instance, we have our bins behind us. Okay, teach so, me. <laughs> color, coordinate, color coordination and waste management Sisters, you've <laughs> taken the whole fashion thing into the world. Yeah. <laughs> I love my girls. Colors matters. <laughs> yes. So we are saying, don't just dump all your waste into mm. one bin. Okay. Use color coordinated bins. So if it's plastic, you'd want to use a red bin for it. Mm. If it's maybe metal, you'd want to use another color, let's say green. If it's organic food waste, you would want to use, let's say, yellow. Mm -hmm based on the uh, five elements that mother had already mm. mentioned. So the color coordinated bins help a lot. Now, when you look on this side, we have rubbers. If yeah. you cannot afford a bin, then we say use rubbers, mm. which can also be color coordinated. Mm. <laughs> so we have blue here, we have the green, green here. here. Okay. Then we have a shade of red, then we have yellow. Okay. Mm. And then again, if you cannot afford this, there's also baskets. Use color coordinated baskets. Mm. Mm to also segregate the waste. So but there are, you know, some items, waste, um, that we can't put in baskets. So how do we then Yes, do that? so um, we have that. You can line it with the rubbers. With the rubbers. Yes, so yeah. if, if you can't just use the rubbers alone, you can line the baskets with yeah. the rubbers. Also color coordinated, bearing that in mind. <laughs> Interesting. I want us to just stay a bit on the colors. Mm -hmm. um, what, what role is the color playing here? Can you, can you please okay. just explain that for us? Um, okay. So we adopted a standardized method, okay. right? We realized that even in the more developed countries, mm -hmm. every territory, every region has its own rules. Okay. So once, let's say, I'll use Japan, for example. Once, let's say, you live in um, Mitaka mm -hmm. and you move to Hachioji, you have to adapt to the new color change, okay. which isn't easy for people. So um, we just want to make it break it down for you. You know how we say food, mm -hmm. green leafy food yeah. affects your health. Yeah. It keeps you healthy, yeah. right? So we want to associate food to green. Okay. So we adopted green specifically for food okay. waste. And then we went to red. Mm -hmm. Because of how alarming the plastic waste is for the environment, mm -hmm. red is such an alarming color. Yeah. Yeah. So we associated red to plastics. Okay. And then black, bottles, you know, we don't consume bottles so much. It's such a dark color. Yeah. So you don't have so unless you buy champagne or some other alcoholic yeah. beverage, you wouldn't come into contact with glass. So we associated black with um, glass, glass, right? And then yellow. Yellow is what well, electronic waste. That's okay. the adoption of the method we're using. Mm -hmm. Now, paper goes for blue okay. um, because of how trees, you know, you have to cut down a tree mm -hmm. to produce paper in that whole life cycle. So we associated blue to green. Mm -hmm. And so it's easy to retain these colors. It's easy to practice it at home with these colors. 
just by teaching your kids and, okay. and all of that. So they can okay. associate it with something okay. yeah. and then they can implement it. So then it there's a difference. Um, there's a difference, it, yes. And, and once you, you memorize yeah. that, no. you, we can scale it across okay. the country or even the mm -hmm. continent. Okay. You did mention uh, some statistics about, um, you know, um, we reaching 2 billion and all that. That's globally. But uh, do you have any statistics for Ghana? Um, no. Okay. <laughs> you know how it is with data. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but then again, um, I, 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 that, that would have helped, yes. at least if we, if, if we knew what we're up against. We're up against. <laughs> but then again, we if globally, it is 2 billion, huh? 2 billion. 2 billion. 2 billion. 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 You mean you're okay. trying to reduce it already? And you have 8 billion people on the earth. On the earth. So that's about a quarter of, 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 wow. of the population. Wow. We're generating waste that is a quarter of the population. So how are we going to put up buildings? Where are we? Where are we going to? Absolutely. When we talk about waste management in Ghana, it's such a huge conversation. Um, the institutions that we entrust our waste in, the places where the wastes are dumped mm -hmm. um, to be recycled is, is, is appalling. Now, the other side of it for me is that the areas that, you know, it's like the damper side, are areas that people live in, and so they're breathing in all of this air. Mm -hmm. I passed by one in Tema, I'll not name the area, and my heart was absolutely broken. And it, there, there was supposed to be an annex that was going to be a more hygienic way of disposing all of, mm -hmm. our, of our waste and... Even recycling it, and it, it, the place has been shut down. <laughs> Nobody should use it. So, so that's where public health comes in, yeah. and that is why we are advocating for Ghanaians to be responsible yeah. for their waste. For their waste, yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. And we also believe that not all waste should end up at the landfill. Now, that, that is the part we're going to come to. Thank you for being a prophetic young lady and taking me straight into the conversation. So we're talking about recycling too, not just throwing away or Absolutely. segregating the, the waste. We're talking about recycling. How do we go about recycling? Because me, I've heard recycling. I've, no, I've never recycled anything okay. except for my clothes, maybe. <laughs> but yeah, I've never recycled no waste. How do you go about recycling waste by yourself as we are saying that we should be responsible for ourselves? How do we do that? Okay. So with the segregation, mm -hmm. once you've been able to segregate it, take for instance the plastic, mm -hmm. you would either you sell it to like companies that use the plastic, later recycle it to make school bags. Okay. Uh -huh. I don't know if you've seen yeah, like we've seen yes, like yes, I've seen the dustbins. Yes, or even rubber balls. Mm. <laughs> they use mm. the plastic for that. Or the bottles, they are companies, so you have aggregators that go around to pick it. So yes. you could either give it to them for free or you take a little token for yes. it. Yes. So that's it for the plastic. And then there's also DIYs. Like you could mm. use, utilize a lot of this like waste for DIYs. So take for instance, there's a bottle. Mm -hmm. Maybe even if you have a bigger one like the dispenser bottle, yes. you could just cut it and use it for your small backyard garden. True. Yeah. So, <laughs> so that is not even that deep. No. no. Basically, <laughs> we're just trying to demystify the whole theory, right? And to cause this mental shift mm. that waste is money. So we have a tagline that waste segregation is the new gold. Mm. So take a household waste. You consume plastic. Mm. You, okay, out of the water you drink and then the bottled water, for example. Mm. The waste, the food waste, for example, paper waste from your kids um, doing their homework and all of that. Just repurpose it. Come to see it as, okay, I can earn some money from this. Mm -hmm. Plastic waste is highly purchased. Yeah. Once it's neat and clean. So you just have to have a polythene bag in the corner of the house. Ensure that once you consume pure water, you just go and put it there. Just keep putting it there. Just keep putting it there. Over a period of a week or a month, you have a whole big bag, mm -hmm. and then you sell it to all these aggregators around. If you are not finding an aggregator, just reach out to us. Okay. We would locate where you are and put you in touch with the nearest aggregator who would come to your house, pick the waste from you, and then go and recycle it. So it's such a beautiful thing to do because you see your waste being repurposed into yes. plastic bowls yes. and all of that. And I mean, you wouldn't have to pay so much to dump it either way. Yeah. Yeah. Once you segregate it, you're saving on your dumping costs and oh, all oh. of that. Listen, this brings me to the point where um, I want to know what got you beautiful ladies into this business because mm -hmm. I would I wanted to skip that conversation I felt like it was a bit cliche but then now I'm listening to you and I see how you're displaying so much passion and intelligence I want to know <laughs> what, what what was the motivation to get into waste management okay um, so it started 
charity begins at home, right? <laughs> okay. And my dad grew up in the typical village where they used um, cow dung and other food waste for compost, right? Mm -hmm. So even at home, we had a plantain tree at our backyard. Okay. Okay. Like, Don't throw the food waste away. Your bones, give it to the dog. And there was this woman in our neighborhood. Every Sunday, she knew we used to pound fufu. Ah. So she would send her son. Those Come and tell, women. Come <laughs> go and tell Amanda's mother that I would come for her banche and her body yeah. cues for our goods. So, I mean, that whole idea came, I mean, and it registered in my mind. And I, I had the chance to pursue further education. And I was in Germany, I was in Japan. And these are two developed countries, yes. top yes. five, yes. right? And you can tell the passion they have for the environment, for the climate, and for waste segregation. Mm -hmm. We were kind of required, if you do not segregate your waste properly in Japan, your house mistress would come and knock on your floor door and mm. come and ask you to be segregated. Mm. And Japan experiences so many natural disasters. And this waste segregation is something they have used to curb the natural disasters they face. You and I bear witness, you bear me witness, right? Um, some of the floods that have occurred are due to our choked gutters. Yes. So why are we causing these problems rapidly because of our attitude? And so we, 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 we Dinah and I lost um, one of our, uh, she was our junior actually in yeah. the circle flood. Yeah. We've lost people. I, I, I had the chance to go to Mepe after the flood. Yeah. And, and you could actually tell due to the drainage system, the impact of the, the flood could have been minimized. Yeah. If we had covered gutters, for example, if our gutters wasn't choked and we weren't building on drainage ways. Mm -hmm. And so as youth, we've seen so many uh, movements asking the government to do better, right? Mm -hmm. But we are also advocating for us as youth to also try, and Ghanaians, to try to do better, to complement which other effort everyone else is putting, put you know? Okay. So basically, that's the source that's of what, our that's question. How you, oh, that's so nice <laughs> to see. I, I want to find out, uh, what are some of the policies or regulations you, you think that we can put in place uh, to help... Uh, you know, bring this awareness. Of course, you're here. That's one. But uh, maybe let's let's dive into some strict policies and regulations that you feel. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah. we 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 like she said. Uh, most of the things we do are born out of love. So I'll start with the very non-strict one. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. So, so for us at Waste Right, uh, we use jingles a lot. We have translated our jingles into about 25 languages, including oh. Swahili. Including Swahili, yeah. My family members yeah. 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 Sometimes I do enter rooms and they ask me, and they'll speak, oh my God. I, yes. I, I can't say this on air, but I was in a particular place. It was a different country. So, you know, people were just adjustable what they, where they think you're coming from. And so they'll, they'll meet again, Aquaba, and they're doing that. And then they saw me and spoke something in some... Swahili. I said, no, Aquaba, for me too. <laughs> and they all started like, oh, you too, Aquaba? I said, yes, Aquaba, I'm Ikea. They're like, no, you don't look at West African. You look East African. I was like... Thank you. But <laughs> yes, they don't need me. <laughs> Take me back to South Africa. Yes. So, so just... the use of the jingles, uh, children respond to it a lot. They're able to remember the words. And we have a dance to go with the jingles. Oh, so wow. I hit not for a dance challenge. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> I like that. Yes. Yeah, so, yes. Yeah, so through the jingle. And also, um, signages and billboards, definitely. Okay. Um, with most of the color coordinated, we yeah. have in sh like we have inscriptions on them. And people do pay people. attention to them? Um, for the schools we are implementing, right. and yes. Also, they, they oh, you started with schools. Yes. <laughs> Do you know why I think that is brilliant? No. Because, again, the children, um, with the older people, we've already damaged our Absolutely. minds. Absolutely. So let's start with the kids. That's really amazing. Yes. Now let's go straight to some of the... Stricter ones. The stricter ones. <laughs> okay. Well, okay, so um, I, I will just talk about one, and then Amanda will okay. continue. So the uh, first one is the SDGs which we are all right, familiar yes, with. Yes, yes. A lot of the SDGs like uh, complement what we do. Talk about the SDG 4, we talked about quality education. Yeah. 11, we talked about sustainable cities. Yes. And even SDG 3, we talked about good health yes. and well-being. And so over to you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so, um, so for stricter policies, we are also asking people to or African countries to reinforce the Agenda 2063 yeah. Aspiration 1, which calls for a prosperous Africa through our behavioral changes. Yeah. And then some of the policies we are lacking, I mean, on the global scale, there are several policies. 
and the global scale, there are a ton of it. But in Ghana, one of the very predominant one is the MESTI National po um, Plastics Management Policy, okay. which has actually um, brought to bear several plastic recycling companies, and you bear witness to that. But we are pushing a step further. Mm. We are asking them to enforce policies that would request organizations okay. to implement it within their organizations. Okay. We are asking um, the Ghana Education Service to help us embed our program into their education because education is the foundation of this. Yeah. Yeah. Climate education is extremely important. So we are advocating, we are knocking on their doors and asking for them to just implement it. We, we, because of our passion, we'll carry it forward yeah. for them, right? Yeah. And then um, we are also advocating for household waste collection to be segregated. Mm -hmm. And so we're coming up with that main scheme to, to, to do that. Then we would need the government, we plead with the government to put in some strict policies. People cannot keep littering. Mm -hmm. You know, there should be a penalty. Mm -hmm. Because the average Ghanaian or the average Africa, once he relocates to a country where there mm -hmm. are strict policies, they adhere, they to, the adhere to it. Yeah. Yeah. Right, so we are asking the government to criminalize littering, mm. literally, like it's a criminal offense, mm. punishable by law. Mm. We are pleading for that. How many years in jail? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and we'll start with a fine. Okay, the fine. We'll yeah. start with a fine, because that's money. Yeah, so we'll Looks start like with a fine. people are stubborn with fines. We'll start with a fine. That is it, you know, we'll start with a fine. They can let us call it a fine for them. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies, Ladies and money. money. Ladies and money. <laughs> All right. We will collect that. Yes. <laughs> And we'll ask later where the money went. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so we're, we're asking for that as okay. well. So these are some of the b very basic policies. Okay. So you know about ESG, environmental, social, and mm -hmm. governance policies as well. We're asking for reinforcement of that. Of that. And, and, mm -hmm. and basically, I'm sure we would make headway within the next five years. Oh, okay. wonderful. Wonderful. Now let's go, come back straight, um, to the conversation of recycling. Some of the things that we've mentioned that we could segregate, recycle, throw away, bury, and whatnot. <laughs> now, someone would ask for the electronic waste. How do we, in 2024, recycle or, or um, manage um, electronic waste? Okay. It begins with the classification of electronic right. waste. Um, people generally do not understand. So that would include laptops, yes. that would include mobile phones. But in Africa, you know, we don't throw these things away. Mm -hmm. We hand it over to a cousin in the village. Yeah. Or when it's what we use it for, uh, <laughs> what do you call it? Um, decoration? Decoration in our room. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. And so there are some companies available that are into this. Oh, that really? are into this, yes. So that is where we come in to help consolidate all these efforts. Mm -hmm. So if you're able to, if you have such waste, you can just contact us we would put you in touch with these people. But the only challenge would be that there, there aren't enough systems in place. In a more developed country, you would have um, community bins with the color coordination, like we mentioned. So it would be a yellow metallic can in some part of the city. And it's only, uh, close by either at the city center or a place where you'd usually go to board your car mm -hmm. or your train. And then you can just go and dump it in. Mm -hmm. And the e-waste company will come and collect it. Oh. Mm -hmm. But we are improvising in Africa. Right. And so that's what we're saying. Just call us. If you have yeah. e-waste, we'll put you in touch with the appropriate quarters. In Ghana, you go and put the waste there. You indicate that there are laptops and things. So you come back and knock on the I, I mean, that's what I was even getting to. Because, yeah. um, uh, you know, sometimes you're just in your home. And all you hear outside is, condemn, condemn, <laughs> condemn, condemn. You get me? Um, uh, for them, um, in that sense, um, how do they come to play with uh, this whole recycling thing? Because I think for them, it's, it's much more, you know, making money out of it. And at the end of the day, to even you paying them or they, you getting money from them, Crampo, is even lesser. Because they can look at whatever it is and they're like, oh, it's all condemned and they'll just give you chicken change for it. Uh, but moving forward, as you did mention, that uh, we should look forward to, because you find somebody who is here, moves all the way to Singapore, and cannot even chew gum. Because if you chew gum and you definitely put it somewhere, you will go to jail for it. That's, that's inter interesting. Let's get into how you think digitalization can come into play with all this. <laughs> OK, OK. So I think that digitalization is also linked to tech, like as she had yeah. mentioned. Uh, one interesting thing is the use of um, AI, okay. like and uh, robots for mm. the recycling. Yeah. And a city like San Francisco in the mm. US does it already, where they use a lot of like robots to be able to sort and segregate the waste. Mm. 
yes. Mm. And there's also uh, something they call a waist compactor. So, for instance, this bin with the waist compactor, you can increase the capacity of the bin. It's able to compress it so you can take in more weight. More weight. And then, uh, then the waste collectors don't have to come often to go and dump it in the landfills. Yes, and then also there's also something called the waste sensor. So it's able to, like, with the waste sensor, it's able to tell the level of waste and mm. to provide data so that their trucks can come and pick it. Wow. <laughs> and then there are even some countries, like there's a country in South Korea that also has that uh, sensor, which is linked to an underground pipe, where it's able to, like, do, they're able to do the sorting. So you don't have trucks roaming around picking the bins. <laughs> Oh, we are here. Oh, Charlie. Yeah. It's a step, uh, uh, a step by step, yes, a day at a time. Early, yes. mm, hopefully, we get there. Yes. At, at our level, um, digitalization helps with the picking and the buyback scheme. Mm. And yes. so that's where um, short codes, since mm. everyone has a mobile phone, at least if you're practicing waste segregation, you dial a specific short code. So. We have we're, we're looking to partner with some of oh, these organizations. So you're, you're trying we're to develop, advocate to develop oh that. Because we are not going with the app system because not everyone has enough phone space mm -hmm. and not everyone is as dedicated. You know, you need to simplify it for them. Mm -hmm. So with a short code, you just dial, you select plastic, mm -hmm. then immediately it sends a notification to a plastic aggregator, a plastic recycling company, and then they come and pick it up. Just type food. The food waste is important to us. Tell me about that. Why <laughs> is this so important? Because um, agricultural yield keeps on reducing. And like I mentioned, there is so much food waste that cannot even be consumed. The plantain stems, you mm. cannot consume it. The plantain leaves, you cannot consume it, but it can be used for compost. Okay. And so one of the, the layers of our project is composting and providing it for women in rural areas as um, organic compost. When you say compost, what do you mean by okay, that? Okay, so the food waste yes. can be churned into compost, fertilizer. Mm. Right, yeah. <laughs> Liquid fertilizer okay. and solid fertilizer. Okay. And then we package it and send it to women in villages. In villages. Specifically because we're trying to bring in the gender bits in this mm -hmm. whole mix, okay. in this whole nexus. And so we take it to these women in villages. That's mm -hmm. why it's so important. And you know, Agboboloshi, they generate so much food waste mm. out of rotten food, <laughs> mm. out of food that cannot be used, out of the husk and other parts of the food that is not resold, that is not sold. You know, the, all these things can be reused mm. and someone sitting somewhere can benefit. benefit. Indirectly, it can affect the food cost because once they are getting this organic waste regularly and mm. at a lower cost, they can also increase the food, um, they can decrease the price or the cost of the food. True, true. Yeah, Wonderful. so those are some of the long run benefits. Mm. Now, in all of this, brilliant ideas and decisions, and even things that you're putting on paper to come up with innovations and all, what are some of the major challenges you're faced with? I like the smile, <laughs> Mr. Kelly. <laughs> and draw one yeah. one is not enough. Yeah. Please tell me some of the challenges you're faced with. Do you I'll, want to yeah, I'll take the first one. So the so a lot of these nines policies, uh, because of the kind of system we have mm -hmm. currently, we are able to do it in the urban areas for now. Yes. <laughs> like, because of issues with connectivity and mm -hmm. then internet, because with the short code and all that. So for now, we are limited because mm -hmm. most of the things that we do is just the urban areas yes. that enable it. Yes. But we are hoping that um, as a lot of the technology and there's a lot of advancement, we'll be able to gradually also move it into the rural areas. Yes. So those yes. are, that's one of the limitations. Yes. And then the second one is definitely funding. Yes. <laughs> because um, a lot of people do not see long-term, like what we are doing. Mm -hmm. They don't see the mm -hmm. long-term benefits. I mean, mm -hmm. they want immediate results. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's why we are very like happy that you've given us a platform happy. like this to come and talk and happy thank you too. so much for your happy partnership. Too. Happy too. Happy <laughs> like too. In, in being able to communicate some yeah. of the things that we do. Yeah, I'll let Amanda take Amanda. Yeah, the, the, <laughs> the challenges the, that are your head. <laughs> yes. Tell me about them. The baseline or the most basic one, like we said, is the labor of love. Um, some people say it's time consuming, but to be honest, once you master the art and the craft, mm -hmm. right, just take it as you've had a meal, you had water, you just drop the plastic here. You just pour your food waste here. It's rather easy, if you ask me, rather than lumping it all and putting it in one bin. To me, some people say it's time consuming, but we want them to understand that once they master 
it, it's even more easier to do. And then the second issue is, like I mentioned, it's, it's a labor of love. You need to love the climate. You need to love your health, yes. you know. Assuming you live in the neighborhood you mentioned where oh, the landfill no. is. I don't know right? If you were asked, way. exactly, if you were asked to do something about the landfill, waste segregation wouldn't come to your mind immediately. immediately. But you should see it as that, that it's a solution to the problems we are facing, mm -hmm. right? So Dino already mentioned funding, and like I said, the platform to educate people. We understand that some people do not understand the impact of their actions. So the platform, we are asking and advocating for more platforms to educate people. We have all the patience and time to <laughs> educate I people. That. I mean, we were even at the Jolu Special School yes. to teach them about waste segregation. Oh, no. We have yes. amazing videos. Yes. After, and these are special kids, if yes. I may say. Yeah. Kids with different um, and challenges, physical yeah. and healthy ch health challenges. Yeah. And they were able to grasp it. Yeah. I, I, think no, that I, is, I always say they, they were very, I, very they, happy. They, they very, very happy. They have the capacity yeah. that yeah. we normal human beings, not, not, not like they are normal, but I'm saying we, with everything working, yeah. Yeah. don't have. Yeah. Yeah. So, like they're more sensitive to the world than we are. Yeah. Mm. Our next stop is the blind and dumb school. Yeah. So Why we're are you also, these schools? Because we're trying to bridge the gap, One, right? Okay. If we start from the very marginalized, we can easily bridge the gap. Yeah. We're trying to, we are leaving no one behind. Yeah, okay. That's yeah. actually our policy. <laughs> Including we the We are leaving no excluded. one behind. And so for <laughs> them, we're going to have very special, we have to special and customize their bin to put the items on the bin so they, they can, can feel it. Yeah. You no, know, they feel it with their palms yes. before they drop oh. the bin. And then they master the arrangement. And so they know from left to right is blue to green to yellow. Yellow is usually the last one, so they master the arrangement. Mm -hmm. So once they tiptoe to the first one, they touch it with a stick, they notice the first one. That means it's green. Mm -hmm. If they, <laughs> So that's why we use the jingle as well, mm -hmm. okay. so that there's that mental correlation between the yeah. arrangement mm -hmm. of the yeah. bin and, yeah. Have you guys done anything with the Busco boys? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they're the yes. most amazing Yes, human beings yes. Right we now. actually have a, we met them, we had a very extensive discussion since they are into cleaning, right? Yeah, yeah. We are trying to implement this 360 method where everything they clean is recycled. Mm. Mm. So just imagine that, cleaning your streets and recycling, recycling it, it at the Whoa. same time. So we're trying to segregate at source. Okay. Yeah. So once that's, they that's, clean, that's, that's we segregate there and then. So let, me, let me teach you this like short tagline mm. where we say, Bass boys, they clean. That's the way to write. Bass boys, uh, bass bass stop stop boys, boys they, they clean. clean. Waste right, right, they segregate. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> as they clean, yeah, we, we segregate. segregate. This is a at source. <laughs> at source. We do it at source. We don't okay. have to take it elsewhere because we currently don't have the infrastructure to host a lot. So that's why we're advocating that we see you segregate at source and you just contact us. We'll be there. So oh with um, a future um, upcycling, you know, projects uh, that you're looking forward to do, um, have you have you touched base with any companies or any? Yeah, well, yeah, Don't touch institutions. Yeah, 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 you know, they are institutions. The they are the ones who have the funding. So <laughs> have, you, have you touched base with any any one of them? Yeah. Okay. Leave that for <laughs> so, <too. laughs> so yes, we've. Spoken to some institutions. We've spoken to an institution called a uh, Climate Development and Knowledge Network okay. here in Accra, and so uh, still not. We are still in discussion, okay. but they also do a lot of work around climate change okay. and with our waste segregation. There's, there's a thin line between, between that okay. and climate change. Yes. So they've given us a couple of ideas, and uh, with time you get to know. Mm -hmm. Some of them, yeah. So that's the immediate thing. Like, it's uh, for now, it's the private firm that we've gone to like discuss such collaborations. But we are always open, like, always open. We've done with Bastard Boys, we've done with CDK, and so we are always open to like further collaborations. We are still researching, digging, speaking mm -hmm. to people yeah. to like assist us and advise us on who to see when it comes to, because it's, it's a fight for everyone. Yeah. It's not just us, so we need to bring everyone. On Why board. wasn't <laughs> the first point of contact for funding or support not the, the Ministry of... Mesty. <laughs> so yes, we had an informal meeting with okay. um, NPAP. So that's the National Plastic mm -hmm. Action Partnerships. Yeah. Um, but because our scope is broader than the plastic waste, mm -hmm. we reached out to them and they're very interested. So we have 
MOU on several desks pending to be signed. To be it signed. starts with an MOU. Yes, Once yes. you're able to buy into your idea, then they can scale it and then give you the necessary funding. We also have a couple of um, grants or proposals in the pipeline sitting in people's email addresses. <laughs> you know <laughs> how, oh, respond. send me an email. <laughs> send me a proposal through an email, you know, and it sometimes it, it, it sits there it for a happen. couple of months. Yeah. And is the Ministry of Sanitation aware of what you're doing? <laughs> Informally. <laughs> yes, yeah, so we extended an invitation to them to come for the lunch okay. um, of the program, but they couldn't um, honor, honor our it. request, mm. but we respect that, and we're hoping for further collaboration as time goes on. Mm. It, it takes time it sometimes, takes time, yeah, yeah, so... Yeah. An election year even, so... Yes, yeah. and it's... Uh, Maybe we, you we, just we, had to check <laughs> that. <laughs> our, our model is yeah, feel yeah. uh, fail-proof. It's not going to fail. So I think they needed that assurance that we have the capacity to implement this across board, mm -hmm. whether through education, whether through the community sensitization mm -hmm. and the collection bit. So what we need right now is um, commercial sponsorship to mm -hmm. be able to meet the demand because we have people constantly calling us that, hey, can you pick up this? Can you pick up this? Can you pick up this? And we're currently doing this, but we're patient and wise enough to know that it's going to take a couple mm -hmm. of years to be able to... Um, scale up as we, we desire. Yeah, but we must also mention we've received a lot of support from the a schools lot. we've been to. The schools we've been to. Yes. They welcomed yeah. us with open yes, arms. Yes, yes, yes. And also... And the, um, the uh, orphanages. So yes. our jingle dance was done by an orphanage. An orphanage. orphanage. <laughs> yes, so yeah. <laughs> they the did that for us. Yes, the they did, they did, the did that for Oh, yes, yes, yeah. Yeah. So they have a good dance team. Yes. They did our choreography for us. And Dinah and I have two left legs. <laughs> yes. So, so you are not, it was difficult to learn. It's not, it not happening. Yeah, but we recorded it and yeah. we were able to teach the, the, yes. the kids. So, so the schools we've been to, we were able to, we teach, to teach them. them. Yeah. But it's a, more simpl <laughs> <laughs> a more simplified version, like a watered down <laughs> version. Yeah, yeah, but we've also received some form of help from Japan. We interacted with the former ambassador of Japan to UN. Mm -hmm. And he really, he, he, we have the book called The Call to Action. Mm -hmm. So the purpose is that when we come to your organization, we interact with you, we set up the segregation with you, we have your head sign mm -hmm. a partnership with us. So that's on page four of our call to action. Wow. You sign that, I, so, so, and so, I will <laughs> influence. Okay. Then the other pages of the book, it entails, um, it includes putting you in touch with aggregators, for example, um, the monitoring and evaluation, because we need mm -hmm. to monitor this. We don't just come and implement the model and go mm -hmm. away. We need to monitor it. So we have all this stated out in the book for you. So the um, ambassador of Japan for um, of Japan to the UN gave us a foreword to this book, and that's how he also supported our program. So every organization we've been through, they have a copy of this book sitting on their shelf just mm -hmm. to keep. Wow. So how do we contact <laughs> Waste to Write? I mean, uh, how, how do we get in contact with you? Mm. How do we get to find out that? Because um, do you also provide dustbins to people? Yes, we do provide mm. if um, we, because of limited resources, okay. we do provide to certain institutions. Okay. But we are also calling on organizations. We would come and train you and the amount of money you pay us, we would use that money to train other schools. Okay. So, so you are recycling the money too? Basically. Wow. <laughs> Wow. So once you call us to your organization, for example, um, MX25 calls us and that tells us that. So MX24, 24. sorry, says that, oh, because of our responsibility to the environment, come and implement your model here and train our workers. We would offer you X amount. We, because we are known for profit, we wouldn't charge you. So we would come. But in this case, you would have to buy your own bins. Okay. We would run the training for you. We would help with the implementation for mm. a couple of days. And whatever gift you give us, we would use that for another school. Mm. So the bigger the money, the more the schools. And mm. we also have an ambitious goal to raise over a thousand wish right ambassadors. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. It's so funny. It's actually a brilliant yes. idea. Yes. Why are you laughing yes. at this? Yeah. <laughs> you think it's so ambitious. Yeah. No, it isn't. It isn't. I think that, again, the, your targets, the people that you're looking at, um, are the best audience you could ever speak to yeah. because they, are, they have fresh minds, fresh ideas. In fact, they are even more inclined to the climate conversation Absolutely. than we are. Absolutely. And so you chose the right... Yeah. You're yeah. laughing now. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And even churches and religious organizations, yeah. once yeah. you invite us, we would implement the module in, and then any gift you give us would go 
to um, a school would benefit. Another mm. school or a marginalized community will benefit wow. from that. That's interesting. So how do we contact Waste Rights then? Okay, so we are very active on social media. Very, very. <laughs> <laughs> Extremely active. Yes, yeah, so we very have new. a TikTok page, a mm. Kame Year International. We have LinkedIn page, same name. We have an Instagram page, yes. Uh, get, get, our, website, <laughs> our website is coming up very soon. We had mm. to take it down to make a few changes, okay. but it's coming back up. And so the Waste Right Project is a pilot project of an, inter an organization called the Kameyiri International. Kameyiri. Yes. And the Kameyiri is spelled? K-A-N-G-M-E. -M -E. -E. Then Y-I-R-I -I International. Okay. But because of um, the search models, once you just search Waste Right, it would lead you. Waste Right is easy. So waste and then the right hand. Yes. So Waste Right. Once you search waste rights, it will lead you directly to our main pages okay. as well. Okay. But we don't also mind sharing our contact yeah. number. Yes, of course, of course, of course, please share. Yeah. Yeah. So um, 0548 you can reach me on that. Okay, and you can reach me on 54 7438355. Yes. Yes, we wish you all the very best yeah. with Thank this you. project. Thank you. Um, Thank you. The, okay, that means we, we know how to... Um, <laughs> Do you want the blue or the red? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which one is your favorite color? <laughs> when, when, when Do you have a favorite color here, Mini, though? Favorite Yellow, color. red. No, no, I'm a dark color person. Oh, so black. Okay. But I have my brown. favorite color here. What is it? It's green. Green. Yeah. Green. Hey, come here, people have come to get themselves into trouble. <laughs> come here, you. It is like, what, what is in there? That's black. Black. That's black. So this is a smaller size, but. <laughs> Next time we'll come with a bigger size. Uh, <laughs> I've rejected oh, it. Fantastic. I'll, I'll take something else when we close. <laughs> Let everybody think that I rejected Let them think I rejected it. <laughs> so um, we're not going to go without giving you a gift. We specifically oh. came with these three. And then we're going to label them for you before we go. Okay. No. So given the fact that you're an organization, yeah. you yeah. know the general type of waste you would consume mm -hmm. will be the plastic. So mm -hmm. we're going to leave the red for you so you can drop these bottles in them. Okay. The green, we know you generate electric waste from your cables and yeah. maybe not a laptop, but then mm -hmm. so we're going to leave the yellow for you as well. Mm -hmm. Black for bottles. And then we're going to leave this green for you for your food waste. It's small because the food waste has to be taken out daily. Yeah. That's why we're leaving it small. So this has to specifically be in the kitchen. Okay. It's lined with the green. Okay. It's lined with the green and all of that. So we're going to tag it and then leave this Ah, oh, thank you. We'll come back to one <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <one is> <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so Thank much, you. Waste Rights, for doing this for us. We really appreciate it. You're actually living by your words. Mm -hmm. Appreciate this. And again, because you're women, <laughs> one win for the women. Thank you so much <laughs> for choosing to help the climate. And we are looking forward to all the amazing things. This journey we are in with you, and we're looking forward to all the amazing things you're going to be coming up with. Thank all you, right. guys. Women all the way it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, uh, so for over a year, myeco.com has been partnering with local NGOs to raise funds for charitable courses that improve communities and change lives. As a social impact fundraising platform, we're amplifying our call for change and impact with amazing prizes to be won after making your donations. Donate to support weekly cleanups at the Labadi Beach or Ahabain's um, a mobile shelter for the less privileged for a chance to win a two-night luxury stay at the Kempiski Hotel in Accra. Also donate to renovate the NICU and maternity wards at Vapo Medical Center or Cornerstone Primary School for a chance to win a two-night luxury stay at the Bridgeview Resort in Akusumbo. And then donate to the Afro Future Scholarship Fund or to renovate Anyenya JHS for the chance to win a two-night luxury stay at the Moving Peak Ambassador Hotel. Go ahead Ahead and visit myeco.com and follow the easy steps to donate for your chance to win our prizes. Myeco is registered with the Ghana National Lottery Authority, Myeco, empowering society to dream big. This promo is regulated by the NLA on the Caritas Lottery platform. Terms and conditions definitely apply. Thank you very much, Jay, for that. Now, right after this exciting conversation on Lifestyle Daily, we're plugging into something really exciting. Do not go anywhere. Stay with us. We'll be right back with the plug.